homework out on your desk, if you would please. You have three word problems. These are similar to some word problems that you may see on the test tomorrow in our next lesson, Lesson 61. And go ahead and hold that handout up so that I can see that it is completed. Excellent. Good. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look. Number one. First one said if 5 is added to 3 times the square of a certain number, the result is 32. Find the number. How did you set up your equation here on this first problem? Uh, Kendall? 3x squared plus 5 equals 32. There we go. How many have the same equation? 3x squared plus 5 equals 32. And you could have had 5 plus 3x squared equals 32. That would have worked as well. What kind of quadratic do we have here, Kendall? <laughs> So we need to, and uh, two steps to doing that, to get, and then to get, so really I have x squared equals 9, so that means x is equal to, and positive negative 3 really means two things, when it says find the number, that means the number is either, it's either 3 or negative 3 because it says the number is singular. So it can't be both. It's either one or the other. And uh, how many have 3 or negative 3 as your two possible answers? I have questions on this first word problem. Let's take a look at the second one. It says the width of a small vegetable garden is 9 feet less than twice its length. The area of the garden is 56 square feet. Find the dimensions of the garden. Um, talks about area. It says find the dimensions. What are we looking for here, Maddie? The length and width. And which of these do we represent as x? Genesis? The length. How do we represent the width? 2x minus 9. Good. 9 feet less than twice the length would be 2x minus 9. But it said the area is 56 square feet. So we have to hark back to what we know about area, Maddie. And that's that area is equal to? Good. Length times width. So in place of the area class, we plug in the number it gives us. 56. In place of the length, the x. In place of the width, the 2x, negative 9. And uh, what do we got to do now, Brandon? Distribute the x. Good. To get 56 is equal to? 2x squared minus 9x. Good. Distribute the x. 9 minus 9 is 8. And uh, it is a quadratic. It is a complete quadratic. Um, how do we want to solve? Move over to 56 is negative. To get 0 equals 2x squared, negative 9x, negative 56. And definitely do not want to complete the square. So it's either factoring or formula. Which way did you do it? Okay. We are assuming, by the way, remember, the only way the formula is bails you out is when you can't factor, right? Like, because if it comes out rationally, you could factor. What's the odds of getting irrational numbers here? Probably low. So probably factors, though formula would work well. And it takes a lot of the thought out of it, really. The 2x squared, of course, will split into? 2x squared. The negative sign tells me. The only way I can think of off the top of my head for 56 would be 7 times 8. I don't want to put the 8 with the 2 because that would be a common factor. So I'm going to put the 8 out here and the 7 here. When we check our outer inner, does that work? Yeah, negative 16, positive 7 gives negative 9. So again, by just making sure we didn't have a common factor, we got lucky on the first try. X is one of two possible answers here. Good, x is either 8 or negative 7 halves. But remember what x represents, class. x represents the length of our vegetable garden in feet. Negative 7 halves feet? No. So apparently x class is 8. 8 feet is the length of the vegetable garden. Then to find the width, we just need to plug it in. And when we plug it in, class, we get 7 feet. And there are our dimensions, 8 feet by 7 feet. How many have those dimensions? Ooh, questions on this one. Questions. All right, let's take a look at the last one here. Baseball glove and baseball bat sold together for $170. The bat sold for 20 more than twice as much as the glove. What's the price of each? Tax, shipping, and handling charges do not apply. Um, just in case you get some smart aleck. Well, what about the tax? This is tax-free week, okay? Shut up. Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway, Abby, how many unknowns? Um, one. What is it? The glove. Glove. All right. 
And so if there's only one unknown, it must be X. X. I feel like there's a second unknown. Oh, yeah. Never mind. But yeah, the bat, too. Yeah, the bat, too. Um, now, do we now make the bat the X or the glove the X? The glove. Still going to be the glove is X because the bat is defined in terms of the glove. How do we represent the bat? Uh, the bat is 2X plus 20. 2X plus 20. How many had both unknowns, glove and bat, had the 2 in, uh, or the 2X plus 20 in the X? All right. And it said, uh, together, sold for $170. Audrey, what would our equation be here? Uh, 2x plus 20 equals uh, 120, 170. There we go. Add the x plus the 2x plus 20. I like that Audrey did that in one step. 3x plus 20 equals 170. Then we just got to solve the equation. Class, move over the 20 as a to get. And then divide away the to get. 50. So that's our X. In other words, class, what costs $50? The glove. the glove costs $50. This is a nice glove. It's not the cheap glove that most kids get for PE class, right? And uh, this is, I'm actually serious about playing baseball, so I want a nice glove. And then the bat costs uh, $20 more than twice that. How much is the bat? $120, which is probably a mid-range bat, but again, it's not your super cheap bat for sure. How many got a $50 glove and a $120 bat? All right, questions on that. Notice that didn't turn out quadratic, and that's fine. Not everything will, but certainly could. We've also looked at problems involving fractions, remember, where we've had, you know, a numerator and a denominator and making a, a word problem out of that. Did not have that on his handout, but of course, I think we saw one on a quiz not too long ago. Questions on word problems as we look ahead toward our test in our next lesson. I go and set the word problem handout aside, or maybe you could write on the back of it, actually. That would be a good thing to do first while you've got it out. You can use this as your review sheet. Um, topics for the test tomorrow. There are one, two, three, four, five, six topics basically covered on the test tomorrow. We go back to absolute value equations. Absolute value equations will be the first topic on the test. Followed by absolute value inequalities. You might want to jot down with both of those the key to absolute value. Anything is to isolate the absolute value and then use positive negative. Isolate the absolute value, then positive negative. Now, in the case of the equation, remember it's set equal to positive negative. In the case of an inequality, remember it's either inside or outside the positive negative. So again, absolute value equals, let's just call this absolute value of x equals a, then x equals a, and x equals negative a. Absolute value of x is less than a, then the x is in between positive negative a. If the absolute value of x is greater than a, then x is smaller than the negative, but x is bigger than the positive. It falls into the outside ranges. So just a quick refresher there on absolute value inequalities and equations. We'll practice with those here in just a moment. The next topic would be rational equations. Rational equations. What's the key to rational equations? By multiplying there to multiply everything by the LCD. With lots of extra E's. Right, Genesis? <laughs> multiply everything by the LCD as your key to rational equations. Of course, decimals, you just move the decimal point, right? Uh, we'll practice with those here in a little bit. Literal equations, those are equations with extra letters. The key to the literal equation, remember, is get all the x's on one side, get all the non-x's on the other, and then factor. X's on one side, non-X's on the other, then factor. That's your key to your literal equations. Formulas are kind of are right in there with it, right? Formulas, um, of course, we get some terminology to know with formulas. The letter that's by itself is called the? Dependent variable. Dependent variable. The other letters in the equation are called? Independent. Independent variables. And numbers or values that do not change are called? Constants. 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 And then the last topic for your exam, or test, excuse me, in the next lesson are quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. We may or may not cover those in this review lesson simply because we've spent so long the last several days drilling those. They should be fresh in your mind. But of course, we have complete and incomplete. We need to know proper quadratic form, you know, the key to solving each of those. But again, we just 
we've just been working on those, so we may or may not actually drill quadratic equations here in class. Uh, of course, we also need to know a quadratic equation is going to have how many answers? Two. Two. And again, how do we recognize quadratic equations, class? X squared. X squared. How do you recognize rational equations? Fractions. Fractions. How do you recognize literal equations? Right. More letters than just the one you're solving for, right? So uh, different things there. Um, also with quadratic equations, the discriminant, remember, um, has different... Uh, different things true depending on the value of the discriminant. If the discriminant happened to be negative, class, what kind of roots would we have? Imaginary, because you can't take the square root of a negative. If the discriminant happens to be zero, what would be unusual about your roots? They would be coincident. If the discriminant is a perfect square, then your roots will be rational. But if the uh, discriminant is not a perfect square, they will be irrational. Right, of course, in both of the latter two cases, you would have distinct roots, the one from the other. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the, uh, the different topics here. Let's go ahead and talk about these absolute value equations. For instance, write this on your paper if you would. 2 times the absolute value of 3x negative 4 minus 7 is equal to 1. That's your seats. Go ahead and solve very quickly, and then we'll go over it together. And Michael, what do we do first to solve a, an absolute value equation? You add 7. Add the 7 to get 8. And then? Divide by 2 to get 4. There we go. And the, really the key there is all we're doing is isolating the absolute value. Once it's isolated, I take one equation and I split it into 2. two. My first equation is 3x negative 4 equals 4. And 3x negative 4 equals negative 4. How many did these initial steps here? All right, from here, of course, we'll move the negative 4 over to the positive 4 class to get 8. And if 3x equals 8, then that means x would equal 8 thirds. Over here, the negative 4s are going to cancel. So that all I'm left with is 3x equals 0. zero so therefore, x is zero. 0. And there are my two answers. Questions on this? How many got these answers? All right, what if, um, let's week just a little something here. Here were this at your seats. Solve. Kendall, what do we need to do to solve this one? Um, we to get um, and then to get so that we've isolated the absolute value. Three x negative four is equal to negative three. Then what, Kendall? No solution. no solution. Again, if you need to, in those notes, remind yourself that if the absolute value of x is equal to a negative, it's simply no solution. By the way, what if the absolute value of x is less than a negative class? No solution. Again, less than a negative simply means more negative. An absolute value can't even equal a negative, much less be less than a negative. What if the absolute value of x is greater than a negative? All real numbers. All real numbers because absolute values are positives and therefore always greater than negative. So some more things you might jot down there. Um, one more thing I wanted to look at. Let's, uh, let's change this up slightly here. Let's suppose we have this. 
We're not going to solve it all the way through for sake of time, but what am I going to have to do at the end? Check. Check. Because here, as I add the 7, as I, well, let's imagine there weren't a 2 there. We're going to need to set the 3x minus 4 equal to x plus 7 and the 3x minus 4 equal to negative x, negative 7. But it's not that always both of these work. Could both answers that I get work? But will they necessarily both work? No. So make sure you check for, what do we call the answer that doesn't check? Extraneous. Extraneous roots. So variable on both sides, one inside, one outside. Watch for extraneous roots. How about this one at your seats? 4 times the absolute value of 2x minus 1 minus 3 is less than or equal to 17. Genesis, what do we got to do here? To get 20. And then to get... So when the absolute value is isolated, we can come over here. We get the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5. By the way, this inequality could switch around. But what would make it switch, class? Dividing by a negative. Dividing by a negative. Maybe multiplying by a negative. That could happen. But more often than that, dividing away a negative could make this switch. But we didn't divide by a negative, so it doesn't switch. So I have a less than or equal to. And anytime we've got an absolute value that's less than, I still have the whole positive negative thing. And maybe we even plot the positive and negative. But where does this thing here go with a less than symbol genesis? Mm, class? In the middle. Less than always goes in the middle. And then if it's greater than, it falls outside the two edges. So when we go here and here with a greater than, it's going to go right here. So I've got negative 5, less than or equal to 2x minus 1, less than or equal to 5 at this point. Does that make sense? Questions on that? All right. So now we solve. What do we do to solve, Maddie? Well, I'll add one to everything. There's actually three sides, technically. Add one to all three sides, if you want to call them that, all three sections, to get... And then... And we get... Less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. And so how would I write this as an interval? Um, the bracket, negative 2, comma, 3, there we go. All right, how many had bracket negative two comma three bracket? All right, questions here. Again, isolate. If it's less than, drop it inside, and then you'll get your answers. If it's greater than, put it outside. Let's, let's change this problem up just a little bit here. And let's suppose this were our problem. Add your seats.
what do I need to do here, Brandon? 6x to 3. To get? 14. Then? Divide by negative 4. To get? Um, actually, we have to do minus 4 is greater than negative 7 times. All right, then what? All real numbers. All real numbers, because it's greater than a negative. How many had all real numbers? How many had no solutions? You forgot to flip the inequality around. Mm, okay, uh, so remember when we divide the negative, we flip it. How about this one? Suppose we have three or negative three times the absolute value of two x negative one. Uh, let's say um, plus four is less than negative seventeen at your seats. Michael's finished. Daddy's finished. As you're finishing, Abby's going to talk us through this one. Um, first, uh, subtract 4 from negative 21. And then divide by negative 3. To get? Positive 7. All right, so we've got the absolute value of 2x minus 1. Is greater than positive 7. And we're now going to reverse it and make it a greater than because we divided out this negative 3 from both sides. Once we get to this point, Abby, now what? Uh, you make two problems. Good. Because with a greater than class, where does the absolute value fall? Outside the positive and the negative. Not in between, but since it's greater than, it falls outside. So what are my two inequalities going to state? 2x negative 1 is less than negative 7. And 2x negative 1 is greater than 7. There we go. And now we just need to solve both of these little inequalities separately to get. Um, you add negative 1 to get uh, 2x minus 1 is less than negative 6. And then divide by the 2 to get negative 3. And then 2x is greater than 8. How do we write this as intervals, plural? Um, parenthesis, negative infinity, comma, negative three, parenthesis, and then parenthesis, four, ne uh, comma, infinity, parenthesis. And there's my answer. How many got this for this problem here? Okay, had a little bit more trouble on this one. Questions on this? Questions on this? Any questions at all on absolute value? Are there any of you say, can we do one more like whatever? Any questions on absolute value? That's the oldest thing that's been the longest since we talked about it. I want to make sure I hit that really well. Questions? All right, well, let's move on then to the next topic, which would be rational equations. I feel like we should be pretty good to go here, but let's take a look at some together. Again, as long as you multiply by the LCD, you're good. However, one thing I failed to mention in the review, so maybe write this down with your review notes. To figure out the LCD, if you have polynomial denominators, class, you need to either or group them. Factor or group polynomial denominators. Monomial denominators, you're good. Polynomials need a factor or group. So if I had a 3x fifths minus x negative 4 thirds, is equal to 4. Add your seats. Solve. Audrey, what is the LCD? 
15. And what, what, once I figure out that 15, I use it to multiply by everything. This fraction, this fraction, and even the 4, even though it's not a fraction. Everything gets multiplied by 15. And the whole point is that the 15 can with the denominators. So I end up with a 9x here. But one thing to watch out for on the test tomorrow, watch out for negatives. It's not really a 5, it's a negative 5. So, Audrey? Negative 5x plus 20. Good, positive 20. Check your work. Did you get that positive? All equal to? 60. 60. Remember, the 4 is technically over 1. Don't try to cancel the 4 with the 15. Fortunately, you couldn't anyway. Now what? Combining the 4x plus 20. Equals 60? To get, and then, there we go. How many had x equals 10 for this equation? Any questions on this? This next thing is a rational equation, but it's got a special name class. It's one fraction equal to one fraction that we call a proportion. How do we solve proportions? Or right, multiply the means by the extremes, or maybe more succinctly just say, let's multiply. Add seats. Michael, when I cross multiply, what do I get? Uh, you get 12x minus 16 uh, time, or equals um, 10x plus 5. There we go. Product of the means, 3x minus 4 times 4, equals the product of the extremes, 5 times the 2x plus 1. Uh, from here, what do we need to do next? You need to simplify, and you get 2x on the left side, and then you get 21 on the right side. So x is equal to 21 divided by 2. 21 halves. You could say 10 and a half or 10.5. Eh, that is like 21 halves. How many have 21 halves for your answer? Questions on that one. How about this one? Add your seats. This was supposed to be easier than this, but whatever. Um, what's the LCD here, Kendall? I did not actually think I meant to have a negative there, but we're going to roll with what you were doing. Um, what is my LCD? X and yeah, so this is definitely going to be longer and harder than I meant for it to be. This was supposed to be an X negative, too. It's supposed to be super easy, but it's not. Um, well, you know, hey, if you can handle this, you can handle what's on the test tomorrow. So that means when I multiply this, it's going to cancel with this, but I still have what in the numerator? Um, um, X in the, the X and the X plus 2. So this is going to turn into a quadratic here, probably. And uh, that was not intentional. But, you know, hey, we'll, we'll roll with it. And then here, two things cancel, both the X and the X plus 2. But I'm still going to have the X, minus two. the X negative 2. And don't lose sight of the negative here. 
And then on the last one, only the x cancels, so I still have to multiply both the... X minus all right, we may not finish this one all the way to completion for sake of time, but here I will distribute, I will treat the 5x as one quantity and distribute it to get what? Um, and then here I'm going to distribute the negative 10 to get? Negative 10. Good job with a positive 20. And then here, I would think multiplying these conjugates to get a difference of squares first would make it easier. Um, x squared, and then distribute the 7 to that. Um, 7x squared, uh, 20. Actually, maybe we will solve this. This actually isn't going to be too bad. Yeah, this isn't going to be bad at all. Hey, let's roll with it. We'll pretend I did this on purpose, except it's on YouTube now that it wasn't, but whatever. All right, um, so what do we do now? Let's go to, uh, to Genesis. Kind of, but when I try to, quote, combine my like terms, what actually ends up happening to them? 10x and a negative 10x. They really end up canceling, so all I'm left with is a 5x squared plus 20 equal to a 7x squared minus 28. By the way, these are the kinds of things we'll be doing after the test, is, is equations that suddenly turn into quadratics. They didn't start that way, they just turned into it. Um, so this is getting a little ahead of ourselves, but hey, this kind of problem, <clears throat> this you wouldn't see, but this kind of problem you'll see on the test. Now what? I'm sorry? The 5x squared over the negative. Yeah, to get uh, 3, I mean 2. 2x squared. And at the same time, if I'm moving the x squared over to the right, let's get rid of the, and put it over here as a positive to get, Three. now, to get x squared equals 24. And then finally, finish this incomplete quadratic by taking the... But I'm not going to leave the square to 24. Instead, how should I write my answers for x? Good. And don't forget the... Positive negative. Positive negative. 2 times the square root of 6. Did anyone happen to get work all the way through and get those answers? Okay, great job. I wasn't supposed to get quite that hard, but you know, hey, whatever. Questions? <laughs> Great review. All right, decimals. Let's move on. I took way longer than we were supposed to. Decimals. Uh, just pick out the ugly one. So, uh, Maddie, uh, you're not, not that Maddie's the ugly one. Maddie, it's, you're next in line. Uh, how many places will I move the decimal? Three. And what do I get when I move the decimal three places everywhere? There we go. Three places everywhere. So here where there's only one decimal there, two more places become zeros. Here we don't need any zeros. Here we'll need one additional zero. Uh, here, excuse me. Wait a second. Did you say 210x? So we move it three places. 2100x minus the 580x and then plus the 387. Uh, it looks nasty, but you know, at least they're nice easy numbers now. Um, what do we do now? Combine here the 2100x minus 580x gives uh, 1520x. All right, plus 387 is equal to uh, 400x minus 173. All right, now what? Which is the. I'm subtracting it to get. And at the same time, let's go ahead and move over the, as a, and that's going to give us, and then finally let's finish by both sides by, and uh, what do we end up with? 4x. Oh. 
28, careful carry again. Yeah. And of course, that can reduce further into. Um, and that could become negative one, one half. There we go. All right. Or you knock off the zeros and make it 56 over 112. And you enter on your calculator 56 fraction 112. And it spits out one half. And you stick your negative back on your answer there. Uh, but that works as well. Using your calculator would help just a little bit there. How many got the negative one half? Or negative 0.5, I suppose, would be appropriate since it was decimals to start with. I wouldn't mock that. But I like fractions better than decimals. Questions on this? Any questions at all on rational equations, whether it's fractions, decimals, we feel like we're going to be able to do that tomorrow. Because that's also been a little while since we've talked about those. Any questions? You await Genesis? Half await? All right. Uh, literal equations. Literal equations. Again, the key. Get all the x's on. Get all the non-x's on the other. So if I had an, uh, an 8ab, uh, positive ax is equal to a squared positive uh, b, 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 15 ab try that 15 b squared I can't copy off my own paper minus a 5 bx that's your seats so brought the uh, 5bx over as a positive to this side. You put it with the ax. Anyone send the ax to the other side as a negative to get the x's together? Oh, I'm seeing people who aren't raising their hands for either. Did we get the x's together? That's your first key step. Fix it if you didn't start over, if you didn't do that. So the 8ab should move over, but where should I place the 8ab? Beginning, middle, end? What do you think? Middle. In the middle. So you get a descending a... Excuse me, that'll be trans over as a negative, right? 8ab. And an ascending b. You want that descending ascending order here. So it makes it easier to do your next step, class, which is to factor. Get the x's on one side, non x's on the other. Factor. At your seats, finish it out. If you hadn't already. Maddie can sit there with a smug look on her face. Good job, Maddie. And I look again, I'm like, oh, her paper's completely blank. Never mind. Bad job. Just kidding. Just kidding. She did it. <laughs> Maddie, what will we do? While they're working, talk me through this. You said A negative 3B, sorry. And I'm pretty sure I meant for this to be a positive 5bx, so it would come over as a negative 5bx because, let's face it, what fun is a problem unless something cancels? And if it really were what I had a minute ago, it wouldn't have canceled. So let's change it mid-problem. This is now a positive, which becomes a negative, which is negative here. So now, Maddie, we can cancel the... Which just looks so much better when we write our answer for x. But there is one little qualifying statement. A could not equal a positive 5b now. All right, so that would sure help if we had uh, a 
deposit. I'm going to make that little note for future years. That we would want that to be a positive 5BX in the review. All right, questions on this. We remember doing these. How about this next one there? Here it's rational and it's literal. As you see, it's clear the fraction first. Then do the same thing we just did. X is on one side, non-X is on the other. Probably should have worked these problems in advance to make sure they worked out. But hey, the World Series was on last night. The Braves were trying to win it in six. Then they did win it in six. I'm not even a Braves fan, but I hate the Astros. Cheating Astros. I tell ya, banging on trash cans, you jump inside and pull the lid down on them. Anyway, <laughs> right up there with the Patriots of baseball, you know. <laughs> hey, the Titans cheated the other night. Again, it's against my Colts. Got cell phones out on the sidelines. You're not allowed to have cell phones, spying on people's plays and stuff and calling stuff in. I tell you, everyone's like, we can't beat the Colts, we have to cheat. Plating footballs and having cell phones out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the LCD here, uh, Genesis? I'm oh, sorry? M and X. So we're going to multiply everything by M and X. We're going to cancel, we're going to multiply. What do we get as we cancel and multiply? Cancel. And normally, class, I take it all the x's on one side and all the non x's on the thoughts. It's already done. So we're ready to do our next step, Genesis. There we go. Factor m and negative i, of course, over here. Factors into a. You're right. Sum and difference. Difference of squares factors into sum and difference, specifically. M and M. And okay. There we go. Because it's just no fun if we don't. Charles, we must do math. Let's try to make it as fun as we can. And so, one little qualifying statement, though. There we go. So, which means, by the way, that there's one value x will never equal. If mn can't be 5, then x can never equal 5 plus 5, 10. All right, x can never be 10, as Maddie so nicely put it. Uh, questions on this? Questions on this? How about this? What if we had this uh, formula, c is equal to 4x negative r, and I said I want to solve for the r. I want to solve for the R. What would we need to do here? Kendall, I think I somehow skipped you. I think it's Maddie. I jumped to Maddie on one problem too early. Anyway, what did you get R by itself? Would I need to divide 4x? Is 4x being multiplied by the R? What did you get rid of 4x? Well, 4x is currently positive. So how would I get rid of the 4x, if that's the route I wanted to go? On the negative 4x, on both sides, right? That would work, okay. And so that would leave me, what on the right-hand side, though? Not an r, but a negative r. And over here, what is c, negative 4x? But if I want the r to be positive, which I do, what's the easy way to do that? Change all the signs. Make this negative, this positive, this positive. There's my answer for R. That's one way you could do it. The other way that might even be quicker, though, we've seen this before. Since I want the R to be positive, why not move the R to the other side? And while we're at it, let's move, also move the... And just do what I call a double switch. So now we get R is equal to... Well, it moves over and becomes a... Negative C. So maybe I'll put that at the end and leave the 4x at the beginning. That would be another way to solve it. What if 
I wanted to solve for the x. Brandon. Add the r. And what do I get when I add the r? C plus r equals 4x and then divide by 4. On both sides. both sides. So the entire side becomes C plus r over 4 equals x. And there we go. Questions on formulas. A little bit more, a little easier, I think, there. Not as much trying to get the x by itself. All right, um, quadratic equations. We don't have a whole lot of time. Let's do just one here. Let's do a 5x squared is equal to 6, negative 2x. Let's have Abby talk us through this. Um, move the 2 over x plus 2. 2x, you mean? Yeah, that's what I meant. And also move the 6 over x negative 6 equals 0. And then, I guess, the formula? Okay, what is A? Uh, 5. B? 2. C? Negative 6. And what is the formula class? Say it with us x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when I plug in the numbers, Abby? Negative 2 plus or minus 4. Square root of 4. Minus or Okay, it becomes minus a negative 120 because of the negative 6 here, but it becomes a plus 120 minus the negative all over uh, 10. 10. Of course, 4 plus 120 is really just 124. All right. Um, and then. By the way, this tells me it's a good thing I didn't try to factor, right? The fact that it came out irrational, if I tried to factor, it wouldn't have worked anyway, so glad we went this route. Now that it would have been wrong to try factoring. You can factor into 431. All right, 4 times 31, so. Uh, negative 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 31 all over 10. And then you can just take out the 2, so it's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 31 over 5. And there are my answers. Really quick, stay with me for just another moment. If I were to have this equation, x squared negative 6x is equal to 247. What might be a good way to try to solve a problem like this? Audrey? I mean, I could use the formula, right? But jeepers, creepers, I don't know, big numbers, right? Completing the square root is your big number method, especially when we've got the one already. We've already got the even. What number would go in the blank here, anyone? 9. Half of 6 is 3 squared is 9. We add it to both sides. And what is 9 plus 247? 256. Ah, okay. And that's going to work out pretty well for us because this perfect square trinomial would turn into a trinomial squared. And when we take the square root of both sides, add the 3. What two answers do we get? 19 and negative 13. Anyway, um, there we go. That's kind of a quick overview of your test, which will be tomorrow in Lesson 61. No homework this evening other than be ready for the test. Do what you need to to get ready. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and you are dismissed.